Hello, happy Friday, everyone. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can sit and relax and craft together for about an hour here in the evenings. Uh, so we usually work on projects from beginning to end, and we are currently working on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along uh, with uh, Jane Davidson and Pat Sloan. So you can get more info on that at thesplendidsampler.com. We are working on Block 18 Flower Child. So we got a lot of our pieces, or a lot of our applique pieces cut out last night. Here's a little monkey with bananas. Uh, we have two more pieces to cut out. Uh, then we're going to set that aside because we have to make the background that they sit on. So I'm hoping we can get that done tonight and hopefully even uh, get them fused down. That would be awesome. That would be good progress if we can get that far tonight. So that is the plan. I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, and if you are coming here for the first time, click like on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. Uh, and then you'll be able to see us here every evening at 8.30 p.m. So thanks, guys. I'm going to flip you around. All right, here's where we left off yesterday. Okay, so we got almost every piece cut out. We just have, um, we have the little heart and everything. All we have left are these teeny phalanges on the side there. So here they are. Didn't quite get that far last night, so let's let's just shimmy these to the side and trace those. I wonder if, you know, I have this itty bitty bit of scrap left. I wonder if we can get those on. So first of all, we have to trace them. I'm using that steam -a seam 2 uh, here's, the, here's the fusible web that I'm using. Uh, the nice thing about this, the steam -a seam 2 versus other fusible webs, is that it's also a sticker. So I can stick on these pieces and lift them up and move them around um, and they'll stay in place before I fuse them. So this has a lot of pieces. Um, with other, other um, fusible webs, you might have to kind of just glue them down a little or just be real or glue or uh, fuse one piece on at a time. But with this steam -a seam Two, I can place everything where I want it to go and it will um, it will still be there before I fuse. Everything can be in the one place. Oh, it's Saturday at 12.30 p.m. there in Australia. Yeah, every once in a while I like doing um, th these at other times, like special little Saturdays or something. So uh, some of you guys that can't watch at my normal time at 8.30 p.m. Central time um, can watch it, but I haven't done one of those in a while. I'll have to plan another one. All right, I have just enough. I have this little scrap piece um, that worked out just perfect for these two little moon shapes. So I'm going to grab my paper scissors. Let's, oops, let's just trim these. So I'm trimming around the shape, not right on the shape, because we'll do that once we um, fuse it to the fabric. Then we can get a real nice cut on the fabric. Oh, you saw, oh, you saw something close to my machine. What model is it? You know what? I'm not positive, Lisa, what model my sewing machine is, because I think it's written on the bottom. I always have to turn it upside down to find out. I might have a little slip here that I wrote that on before. Um, I have the, well, it, here, here's the, um, the instructions that came with it, but this isn't right. It's, it's a, it's from the 74. So, all right. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I know it's from the seventies. So it's a seventies Kenmore machine. The Food Network was featuring a bunch of restaurants in Minneapolis, Broders and Nyes. I don't think Nyes, I think Nyes has closed. <laughs> and Broders, I'm surprised that, that they're featuring that. Oh, that's interesting. 
I know where both of those places are. I could probably walk to Broder's if I wanted to walk for a little ways. That's funny. Pizzeria Lola, that's where you gotta go if you're in Minneapolis. Pizzeria Lola, it's my, it's our go-to fave place. You might see me sitting at the um, bar area where you can see inside the pizza <laughs> there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So let's pick fabrics for these. We haven't done that. Um, we could use fabrics that we've used here, but we have a lot of these pale colors. Maybe maybe we need some sort of color to come back in here. Um, this is popping out at me. How about we do this uh, this yellow kind of gingham? It's kind of has the yellow from here in it, and it has the pale, um, the just off white from the rest. So okay, decision made. Making quick decisions here, which is just fine with me. All right, let's. Man, this applique makes a mess. I got just stuff everywhere here, um, moving it all around. All right, now we got a free, <laughs> a free pressing area over here. Let's let's uh, get a good spot for this. Actually, I could see. Do we have that? Oh, we do. We have some of this yellow in our scrap scrap bin. I forgot to use the scraps last night, so I've been saving all of the scraps. Ooh, perfect. This will get both of them in. See, so instead of throwing away a scrap that, you know, normally looks like a scrap you throw away, I'm, I get to use it for these applique pieces. That's the nice thing with this splendid um, sampler. We're going to have a lot of just random pieces. Um, or random little applique's or random tiny little pieces that we'll need for a block. All right, so right side is down, so this is the wrong side. Let's peel away these backings. Oh, Sharla! Good, I mean, yeah, you could actually needle turn applique this whole thing. Um, I know we did a needle turn that was pretty detailed with, with many more pieces than this um, in the first Splendid Sampler. But yeah, if you do this with the raw edge applique way, it's really, um, you know, not too horrifying. <laughs> like we're still gonna finish this relatively quickly. And you know, I'm doing this probably in the fastest way possible, this block. There we go. All right, and I put these so they're kind of mirror each other here just because I am kind of I have this uh, this grid, so now they'll both kind of be going in the same direction versus one of the lines going this way and the other lines like going this way or something. All right, so let's fuse those. But here's the nice thing, like I said, both sides are sticky, so if, if I didn't like this exact spot, I can unstick it and move it, but they stick. That's what's so nice about the steam seam too. Uh, other, other fusibles, you know, this wouldn't stick on there. I wouldn't be able to just hold it like this. I'd have to fuse the one and then fuse the, the second one. Or lay them out just perfect and then just quick push it down and hope that nothing moved. But with um with this steam a seam, it just sticks right on there. Alright, let that cool for a sec here. Ooh, yeah, hot. Right, we'll cut these out one by one and then we will be done with our applique piece crap. So after this, we have to do our background, um, our background motifs, and that's that's the four patch, the four background squares together, and then um, they have those little corners on the edge too. Ooh, gosh, this is. I think I'm gonna cut this way still, where I have a bigger piece to hold on to. So this skinny, skinny piece. Yeah, but I'm doing this the quickest way possible. I'm doing a raw edge applique um, with the steam to seam, which sticks down, which makes it easy. And then I'm also just going to sew on the sewing machine with just a straight stitch all the way around. I'm not even doing anything decorative. I don't have any decorative stitches on my machine. A little blanket stitch, if you have that on your sewing machine, would look so pretty with this, I think, um, or any other decorative stitch. I'm just doing a little straight stitch just on the inside of the shapes. Wow, this does not look arched. Let's fine tune down here. There we go. Yeah, Barbara, you're gonna do it not too bad. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I felt the first time 
I, you know, this is how I feel a lot of times when I look at these new blocks uh, when they come out on Thursday. My first reaction is always like, oh, that's pretty. And then immediately after, it's like, oh my god, that looks like a ton of work. It's just going to be so much work. <laughs> but once you start just doing the steps and breaking it down, all of a sudden it just gets done. Be sure to do a really scant quarter inch because there's not a lot of room to place the flower. Oh, that's that's good to know, Nolene. Oh, so she traced on the grid side and peeled the plain side. Bonnie, you're saying there was a demo on the Steema seam too. So we kind of did a test on that last night. Uh, so we did some where we traced on the grid side, which is what I did here. And then we did other ones where I traced on the, the blank side, like these ones. Um, and man, it was just so much easier to take the fusible off when we did, when I drew on the blank side. So I don't know. So I, I kind of I kind of switched my way of doing it. I, I do it on the on the I draw on the blank side and then tear off. Inside first. These actually go up here. Jeez, these are little slivers, aren't they? Man, I'm going to just have to do a straight stitch down the middle of these. I don't even know if I'll be able to go around both edges. All right, anyway, here are all of our pieces. <laughs> Looking a mess. <laughs> but there we go. I think it's going to be cute. I think it's going to barely pop off the background fabric, but I think, I think it's going to work. So all right, let's carefully stack these away because now we have to deal with our background. So we still need to make, we need to make a four patch. So our four shapes together, you can tell that there's, there's two different fabrics back here. And then we have to make little corners for them as well. And we haven't cut all that fabric yet too. So let's get going on that. But all these pieces are prepped. I just have to make sure they don't blow away on me. So with the Steema Seam 2, both sides act like a sticker. So I think maybe the original Steema Seam, only one side acted like a sticker. So maybe that's the side that, um, maybe that's what they're using, where you have to draw on the, the um, gridded side, because there's only one sticky side. But with the Steema Seam 2, there's, there's two sticky sides. All right, let's just clean up. I don't want any of, the, any of these little bits anywhere out of our hair. All right, so these are our background pieces, and then we're using white for the little um, corner pieces. So, all right, what do we need? We need two cream print squares that are three and a half inches square and two beige print squares. So we need four total. So two of these and two of these, all three and a half inches. We can do that. And then uh, four blue stripe pieces. Okay, we're doing white um, that are two and a half inches. Great. All right. Three and a half inches and two and a half inches. So let's do, don't look at my, I gotta show you guys. It's just becoming crazy. <laughs> this is what Apple Pay looks like. I got that there. I got this mess of stuff here. I got scissors and pencils and glue pens and man, stuff everywhere. So <laughs> it's looking crazy town. All right, let's, geez, let's just put some of these scissors away. How about that? Whew, it's nice to clean up a little before the next step. All right, so I need some three and a half inch squares out of here. Gosh, I gotta find a ruler underneath here too. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do is fold um, this piece in half and then fold this piece in half on top of it and then cut one three and a half inch square, and then we'll have our, our four pieces right away. So um, I'm just gonna press this edge, we'll do it on this edge here for, for this shape. So we'll get our little beige number one going. Okay, and Let's just fold it right away. There, so I'll, I'll get it from up here. Okay, 
and then this guy. We'll just, we'll just chop it off of each end here. Not pretty, but, but doing it. So we'll get that side and this side quick. Oh, Lisa, these are two of my most favorite purchases this year. Um, the uh, Panasonic, uh, here it is. You can just do a search for the Panasonic cordless 360 iron. Uh, on, on uh, um, Amazon or something. I think actually I have a link in, in this post here if you want a direct link to that. And then this is a wool, um, just a wool pressing mat, which are surprisingly not cheap. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a simple, you know, thing, but surprisingly not um, as cheap as you think, these pressing mats. But man, not having a cord on the iron, oh, it just is, it's life-changing in a microwave, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's like, do I really need a cordless iron? But, oh man, it really is a nice little deal. Especially if you're pressing large quilts or something every once in a while. Yeah, I think I have a link for both. Uh, they do offer both on Mass Shop every once in a while. Maybe that's where my link goes. Hopefully not, though. I think um, I think I have the links going to Amazon because I don't think either of them are on Mass Drop right now. However, right now on Mass Drop for a couple more hours, it ends today, but for like six more hours or so, those packs of 100 machine needles, those Schmetz uh, Microtex needles, those are on sale for like six more hours. I think I put that link here too, but I, I got one of those this time. It's come up on Mass Drop a few times and it's always been like, oh yeah, I should maybe get those and I never did. And finally, uh, bit the bullet on that. All right, I'm gonna try and move all this fabric without, without, move, without like moving those nice edges that I did. So I'm gonna just rotate this 180. all this bulk again. All right, let's cut those other two sides. Okay. So we're getting those the three and a half. Oh, man. I hope it's three and a half, right? Uh, yeah, three and a half. Yeah, Leslie, that's why I waited so long to get them, because I'm like, how am I gonna ever use all those needles? But the more I've been doing these splendid sampler things and the quilts, the more I've been going through needles. And uh, um, and you know now I'm starting to do some free motion quilting and and I'm almost out of my needles. I am totally almost out. So I'm freaking out a little bit. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's on super sale, so I'll get it. All right, woohoo! Done with that fabric. So here's what our little um, our little guy is gonna look like. It's nice to just cut that square once and have have four four pieces out of it already. Oh, it's gonna look so cute, I think. All right, um, let's finish cutting. I was gonna say let's sew this together first, but ugh, let's finish one task at a time. So let's. Let's just deal with um, this guy right away too. So we needed uh, four, two and a half inches. So that's eight, nine, ten. I need at least a ten inch area. This is easily that. Um, I think I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to cut it in half and then I'll cut um, a piece out and then um, cut it in half. Just 10 inches, two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, I'm doing this instead. I'm gonna fold this in half and fold this in half and I should have my two and a half inches. Perfect, yay! Okay, let's, let's do that instead. A little less maneuvering or a little less wasteful on the fabric. 
I've used heat and bond before too, um, which is perfectly fine. Um, I think I just I think I need new heat and bond though because my heat and bond or heat and bond life is another fusible. Mine doesn't work. Like it'll stick and then it will unstick. So I've I've just had trouble with it lately on on um, these videos here. I think it might just be super old. <laughs> so I, I think that's kind of my problem. You know what, let's cut, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna cut my two and a half inches this way to get rid of all that um, first. So can I do that with this ruler? Let's see. So I have it on uh, uh, the fold on a line here. Oh, there you go, the, um, Noeline mentioned, um, if you don't want the hundred needles, split them, split the order with, with someone. And then you guys can share like 50 needles each or something. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll do that with my mom. Oh, I think she buys, she likes buying her needles from a certain place though. All right, let's, let's just grab another, another brewer here. So I can just keep this in the same spot. To look, oh gosh, I'm trying to move this ruler out of the lever. Two and a half inches. There we go. Ooh, that scared me. Okay. Now let's fold it in half again and get our four squares out of this. All right, this time I'm gonna get my little rotating cutting mat down here. Cause I'm gonna cut this one edge and I'm not gonna want it to move at all. Yeah, this, that was gonna work out perfect. Okay. All these little steps take time. This is, I was just, just thinking, man, I'm still cutting. Like I said last night, cutting is just one of those, uh, one of those steps that I never think about taking forever, but it always does. But we're done now. So let's, uh, let us again, let's shimmy all this fabric out of the way. Rulers out of the way. Okay. <laughs> My stack of crazy is growing over there. Rotary cutter. Don't need you. All right, let's get our pieces out and let's get sewing. So first up are these guys. So I think this looks fine just like this. Um, let's let's uh, sew this four patch together first and then we'll be sewing um, these guys on next. So let's get down here. Gosh, I feel like we haven't been on the machine for a while, but I guess we haven't because we've been working on that pineapple block Linda, you'll get it done. The pineapple block will get done. And I just realized I'm not done with mine either, but I feel like I'm done. All I have to do yet is all the little, um, all of the little French knots. So that's, that's nothing, nothing too big. All right. Put them right uh, together there. Okay. Tempting to sew straight <laughs> in a scant quarter inch, which I'm not always good at, but we're giving it a try. Concentrating on sewing straight. Okay, let's get my little finger piece in here. mess. There's just a mess everywhere. Um, it'll be nice to get this block done. I'm going to clean all this up and have a nice area again. All right, we got our two pieces. We need to press them. 
uh, will press, well, it looks like um, in the directions they want them pressed open. So what that means is that the seam allowance isn't to one side or the other. So let's just, uh, how I like doing that is first I like, um, I press the seam and then I open it up and press to the one side first. There, so it's it's pressed to the one side, the seam, seam allowance, and then I'll go back and I'll open it up. And this, um, this Panasonic 360 cordless, um, it has a point on both ends, so you can, if you're left-handed or right-handed, well, or want to go back and forth like what I just did, you can easily get that point in there, which is nice. And it's it's hefty, so the weight of it um, will press it too. So, all right, there's our first, let's get our second guy going here. Oh, the FedEx guy left with your sewing machine today. Lisa, did you have to send it in somewhere to get fixed or something? Oh, are you moving? Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. But yeah, that'd be a bummer of a day. <laughs> uh, all the, the making stuff going away. Let's just get it press in the front again. All right, we are ready to sew these two guys together and then we'll press it open again. So let's just make sure uh, we have them going the right direction. Actually, I wanted um, these swirls kind of were swooping up. That was kind of pretty. So I'm gonna, yeah, like this. So I'm going to put a little wonder clip where these two seams meet. You can use a pin. I'm kind of digging these wonder clips. Uh, so, let's get those in there, add to my junk pile here. So let's try and match these two seams up the best we can. And then match the edge up. Make sure that, you know, if you're it's still, make sure that it's still a four patch here that you don't accidentally go like this. Uh, we need those to still stay together. Actually, so I messed it up already. I wanted it here and here. There we go. These two seams. Okay, it's looking good. Throw that in there. And that's probably all I'll need. I don't think I need one for the top and the bottom. Um, that's going to stay together fine, but I want to make sure that that um, point stays there. Oh, Gretchen, you got an electric tea kettle. Oh my god, I love mine so much. Again, it's just such a silly little thing, but I uh, just turn it on in the morning, and uh, then I make French press coffee. It, it's just, and I use it later in the day to just heat up water for tea. It just is one of these things that is just makes a pleasure, uh, uh, one little extra pleasure during the day, I suppose. All right, move those. I'm going to grab, got a stiletto sitting around here. There we go. All right, hopefully those points match up. And there we are. So let's press this open and then we should be ready to get those corners on. All right. So again, this we wanted to press open. And those are in the instructions, um, whether pressing open or not. It makes sense to press open because we're putting all that applique on top. So the more equal the seam allowances are the flatter it'll be in ooh our point in the middle looks great i think ooh i'm, I'm liking this for a background it all, it all of a sudden looks like something doesn't it it just starts to come together it's always exciting all right get in there get the press it open it's hot from the iron still All right, 
I think we got a front and oh, we didn't get it quite exact. I'm like less than a millimeter off, but <laughs> I think we're fine. And we're an applique is going to cover up that center anyway, so it's not going to matter. And hello, it's so close anyway. It's, I'm just being silly. All right. Um, next up, we have these little guys, and they get sewn uh, point to point in the corner, and then they'll like come up like this. So you can draw as a guide um, from one point to the other. Um, or one thing you can do, what I'm going to do here instead, is I'm going to just put a fold line in all of these. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to like drag my finger across, I'm just going to kind of press because if I drag my finger across, it's going to stretch it out a little bit. I don't want that, but there we go. That gets a pretty clear line in there. That's all I need. I need um I need to align to sew on. And I could eyeball it. I could just start sewing here and aim for down here. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. It is very, very close. Um those those pieces together. But from far away it looked perfect, perfect, and so it was a teeny little bit of a bummer that it was a hair off. <laughs> but it really is silly. The nice thing, uh, Noli says, be sure to be skimpy while sewing these on because we have to, we have a small space to fit all these appliques in. But luckily, we do have those, they're with the steam -a seam too, so we can stick them down and pick them up and, re and reposition them as much as we want before fusing. Um, and we can fuse them it all at once. Um, it, that would be a little tough to do without the steam -a seam too. You'd have to with just like a heat and bond or something, you'd have to either tack it down all the pieces with a little bit of glue, or you'd have to kind of lay them and hope that they don't move when you press, or um, do it one at a time. Ooh, I'm not really on the point here, but I don't think that's going to matter much. All right, so let's sew all these fellers in the corner. I'll uh, place them as I go here, but we've got to start with one. And I, I'm just going to sew all of them at once, I think. We'll just go around, get these all on. Leslie Ann says, I love the 8%. It helps so much. It, I That is one little mantra that I find myself saying every single day. So I'm going to sew just a hair to the... Uh, outside um, of, of these, just so it's on the outside of the whole piece, because that'll give us some more leeway um, if, if it turns out that the inside, we need a little bit more space on the inside. But yeah, that 80%, it just allows me to start things, or if I get really, if, I, if I'm really struggling on something, like struggling on getting started on something or struggling with an idea. If I catch myself struggling, then I'm like, oh wait, I'll just make it 80% good. <laughs> I'll make it to the 80% of where I want it to be. And that just does enough to trick me into getting going on it and tricking me into making faster decisions. It's just, um, you know, I'm still gonna work on it hard and try and make it really, really good still or whatever. You know, I'm still going to end up trying to get to that 100%, but that just the thinking about, oh, hey, it only has to be 80%, it allows me to get started, it allows me to make faster de decisions, it allows me to be okay with my decisions. It just gets things done. And it helps me finish as well, because sometimes you can just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. But if you are like only 80%, then something pushes through. Okay, two more here. Oh yeah, I got a pile of stuff. Just like a crazy amount of scraps underneath here. This and foundation paper piecing, that seems to always make a huge mess on my on my desk here. Almost there. <clears throat> okay. 
everything looks so pretty, I think. How, how are we doing on time? Oh, we totally have time to fuse this whole thing down. Easy peasy. Great. That's awesome. So we're a little faster today than I thought we'd be. So I'm missing a few of you guys' comments, so if I don't answer a question, just just ask it again. I'm just trying to get these seen soon. It's flipping by pretty quick here. Okay, it sounds like you guys are talking about this a little bit. Yeah, so I am I am doing it. Um, I'm sewing just a hair. You can kind of see my fold. Let's see. Let's get the right angle. There we go. You can kind of see my fold here, and I'm sewing just to the outside, the outside of the whole piece. So outside. Um, I'm sewing just to the outside of it because then it'll allow for me to fold on that same fold line and even maybe a little bit more, which will make my center area just a tingy tish uh, bigger, which will help um, us to place all the, all the pieces later. Oh, you've been working on working on costumes for a show, Jeannie, so your sewing space is a, is a total mess. Yeah, it'll just get worse and worse and worse, and then uh, when I'm done with the block or done with the project, then I just clean the whole thing up real quick. All right, so I'm just giving these a little quick press. Um, so what we have to do now is we have to snip off these um, this excess fabric, because we're going to be flipping these up. See, there, there we're, we got our, our pretty little um, triangle going here. So these ultimately get flipped up. And then we have all this bulk back here. So we are going to trim all that off um, to like a, a seam allowance worth. So like a quarter inch away from our seam. So we don't have all these layers of bulk here. However, I some people cut that off right away. Um, I like pressing first because you can use this edge of what you were going to cut away, you can use that edge to kind of aim for these, these edges. When you fold it up, you can, this triangle that you're folding up, you can aim these edges towards um, the edges that are already there. And if you've sewed a little wonky, this can kind of sometimes save you. So you end up with a nice square bit. So I am, I am going to do these one at a time and we're going to use those outer edges to aim at. And then we'll cut afterwards. So um, beforehand, we will do that. Oh, Jennifer, I'm so sorry to hear that. Sending out good vibes your way. Good vibes to help you through. Glitter sparkles. <laughs> Two more to go here. Oh, I think I can hear the hugs coming in. All right, here's our last fold here. And then we'll trim these pieces after. Oh, look, we got our pretty our pretty center area going here. Okay, we're good. So, um, all right. So this is our little edges here. So now we can go ahead and cut these off. So we can do those in two ways. Uh, you can grab your ruler and a rotary cutter and you can just you can open up. You can open up um, the square like this and put um, a quarter inch mark. You can put that right on your seam line, and then trim on the outside. There we go. Now we got rid of all that extra bulk. So there we are. That is our first little piece. Um, so you can do it with uh, the ruler. But I just like grabbing a scissors and just going for it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just open this up and cut off all that slack and then be done with it. <laughs> 
to me, that's easier than um, repositioning a ruler and moving that all around. So I just kind of eyeball a quarter inch and let it be. But I know some people like using their rotary cutter and making sure that it's a quarter inch, so you can use that as well. There we are. That's the back. Um, here we are. So we're ready to place all of our little pieces now. We got it kind of like this. I like these swirls going up. So all right, let's find the pieces again. Looking like a crazy mess here. All right, now we gotta position these just right. Okay. You know, we could use the light table as a guide potentially. I'm not sure I'll be able to see um, this through the light table, but we might be able to. Otherwise, I can just we can just use uh, use this photo as a guide to place it. Like you know, we have this center line, the center line here that should be helpful to place. But if you do have a light table, it's under all of my fabric here, but it's here and I think it's plugged in. And if you want to get super exact, I think we might be able to. Look, turn it on. I'm not sure how well I'll be able to see this under. Yeah, not too well. Not enough um, to be helpful, I don't think. So we're going to do it without the light table, which means we're just going to eyeball it. And that, again, is one of the nice reasons um, to use this steam a seam, because I can, I can keep, I can replace it still. So I'm going to get this right under here so you guys can see it here. Um, let's start, well, let's start with this large piece here. So I'm going to move all these. So to get the paper off of the back, I'm going to scratch a little X in the background paper. And that way I can pull the paper off from the center, center out versus um, trying to get the edge because if I try and get this paper at the edge, I might fray my fabric a little bit. So I'm pulling from the center out. Oops, keep feeling all that stickiness, a little sticky. All right, so this is dead center. I might even fold it in half here, put a little, little um, center fold in here. So a little, little tick at the top and a tick at the bottom there. There, I, can, I can just see those folds. So that'll go on the center line. And looks like it crosses over maybe this much. I'm just going to stick it temporarily right there. And luckily, like I said, it's like a sticker. So that makes it super easy. Um, something easy to go on top of this would be this heart. Oh, and remember, you guys, we, we're going to lose a quarter inch here, too. Maybe we should check to make sure that this is six and a half inches. Yeah, we're plenty good. So remember that you lose a quarter of an inch when we sew this in. So don't put, like, your heart up way too high. Like, don't put it way up here because you'll, you'll cut it off, right? Okay, let's... Draw that X in the background there. You can use a pin or something. If you want, I just have that stiletto sitting around here, and that works pretty good for this. Oh, man. I just remembered something, you guys. So, you know I'm watching. I have to go on a little rant right now. <laughs> but I'm, I'm watching, I'm binge-watching all the Grey's Anatomies, like, from season one. And without doing it, spoilers. People get injured all the time on that show, right? Oh, this is pretty. I love that heart right there. Uh, but so one of the main characters gets injured. And then it's a musical after that. It's a musical episode after this person gets injured. And it makes sense at the beginning because we're like, oh, it's their perception. They're like in between life and death and they hear everything with music. Like, okay, fine. You can let that pass. But then in all the other scenes where she's not in or, or she's unconscious, um, well, now you know it's a she. <laughs> but then 
then they're still singing and it's the worst it is just and, and you know they were doing this in the, like the early 2000s on other shows like scrubs did this and there are a few other shows and it's just like they they're like they find out that oh a portion of our cast can sing you know what i mean we should make them sing in an episode like it would have made more sense if they had like a hospital recital and everyone was forced to have a a talent or something like that would have made more sense than this musical and uh, like I said you can forgive it for the first song but man it's painful to watch so that's that's the episode I'm, I'm currently in and I just can't I was gonna give it I knew it was coming up and I was gonna give it another go because I felt this way last time I saw it like in real time when I saw this back in 2003 or whatever year we're in for this um oh god it's painful anyway I thought I'd I thought I'd have more leeway for it the second time around but I don't it's making me mad but it is it is a sign of the times though because that was a popular popular thing to do on TV shows back then, so I'm, I'm giving it just that, but it's totally taken me out of all these characters, and that's what, that's what I, um, that's what's getting me. And it's clear who the singers are, and who the non-singers are, and who the real non-singers are, because there's a few people that can kind of sing, or they can sing, they're good singers. Um, they're not like professional singers, though. Um, and then there's a few that you know, are, they pass for singing, where they can still kind of feature them. And then there's singers where they got to blend their voices with a ton of other things, a digital whatever, to make it all work. And then there's just a few cast members that they just don't sing at all. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm having pain watching that, that episode. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what are these actors thinking that, oh my god, god now I have to do a singing episode. Because that's popular right now, is everyone's doing singing episodes. Ugh, it's hurting me, I'm telling you. Okay. <sighs> I just have like 10 more minutes of that episode, then it'll be done and I can pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> Alright. I just, I'm still just guessing on these, but I think they're looking okay here. Everything seems to be fitting okay. I'm definitely happy that I am able to stick these down because this would be difficult if all these are moving around. Like if I didn't have this sticky stuff on the back, I would just be kind of, they would all just be kind of hanging out, you know, like this floating. And I, you know, I have to quick put an iron down and hope I got them all in the right spot with the steam seam. I mean, they're all sticking in the exact spot that I need them to. Let's take care of these baby ones here. Oh, it hurts even me thinking about, thinking about it. I'm like replaying the episode. I'm trying to decide how good the singers are or whatever. I don't know, in my head right now, and it's pain, paining me to like think about the episode, like playing it all out in my head again. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> there are some excellent, most of the, most every other show is great and I still totally enjoy watching it but man I missed on that one all right so this looks this looks the same either way so I'm gonna just make sure I got it right so this one crosses over that plane just a hair Ugh, we're gonna go right like that oh that's cute I like this yellow that we went with I can't fast forward, Lisa. I just, I can't. I have to watch and I have to. I feel like I'm missing stuff if I don't watch it. I'm pretty good at letting it, things like that slide, like, oh, whatever, it's fine. But I would have been fine with the musical. 
I would have been totally fine with the musical if it made sense. Because like I said, you forgive it at the beginning of the episode because the one person, um, you know, is seeing herself outside her body and the outside of her body is um, singing. And so she's freaking out because she's, you know, dying, basically. And then, uh, then another character starts singing and then she's freaking out but then they're singing without her there anymore so anyway they set up a way for it to make it work and then they went away from it making it work so anyway that end i'm done talking about it it's my pet peeve of the day but now the now the songs are in my head <laughs> It's a good device to move the story along really, really quick, I suppose. Or it's a device, not a good device. All right, so these kind of angle, they don't go straight up, they angle a hair upward. Kinda, I might have made this guy a little too high, but I think, yeah, I think I put that a little too high. So let's place this. Look at this cat. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna get this one opposite and then I think I'm gonna move this guy down a little bit more. Oh, you had to, wa you had to stop watching this show because it was too sad. Yeah, I actually, I had to stop watching all like high anxiety, stressful shows, but you know, which Grey's Anatomy kind of is to some extent one of those, but it's more of like just an old friend, <laughs> you know, it's something I think I watched in college a little bit and, and it's like sitting through binge watching an old friend, even though it is stressful and, but it's funny and all the characters are great and, but yeah, new stressful shows. Like I know like Ozark's supposed to be really good and there's a few other ones that I'd love to see, but I just, I'm not going to deal with anxiety shows anymore for a little bit. Like Better Call Saul, I need to see one of those. Oh, it does kind of cover, oh, these do kind of go right up to the point, don't they? I think this covers a little bit, but it looks like it was supposed to just go to the point. So let's, none of our other things go to the point though. I kind of like it a little off, but yeah, you're right. Let's, let's shimmy it a little closer. There's enough anxiety quilting. <laughs> uh, this is like my anti-anxiety hour of the day. Uh, that's looking awfully cute, I think. All right, we got just these two more pieces and then we can just fuse this whole thing real quick. Yeah! Then um, all we have to do is stitch around all these edges. And like I said, I think I'm just gonna do a machine, a straight machine stitch. I'm not doing anything decorative. Um, you know, you could, it'd be really pretty, but I'll just do it just like this. That, I think, I'm going to cut my pieces of hair smaller than in the photo, but, ooh, it's looking cute though. It's just a bunch of little pretty light fabrics together, I think. I think you can see them off of that background, and I think once we actually sew them down, I think you'll even see them even better. So I think, I think these fabric choices worked out okay. Right. This almost looks like a dragonfly here. I really like that. Okay. So there we are. So now they're stuck down with the sticker, but see how nice this is? I can handle all of this. Um, with any other fusible, I wouldn't be able to do that because they'd all just fall off, right? Um, I could I could have tacked them on with glue. So if you, yeah, if you don't have the steam seam, if you have a, just a different fusible, um, just throw a little, tack it with a little piece of glue underneath before putting it down. Then you can have it all like this ready to go. Too, and they should all hold but man just having these all be a sticker 
um, work great. <clears throat> All right, now is when the real fusing is going to happen. So here we go. Let's just make sure yep, our seam is flat on the back. All right, so this is going to make it permanent. Or, you know, semi permanent, I suppose. <laughs> that monkey cute. All right. Edges and then I don't know, we'll hold it here for a few seconds. Yeah, that sticker feature on this steam of steam too is really um, saving me time um, during this this step for sure. These are all going to be held down with with a uh, sewing still. So if I don't get it perfect here. It'll be okay, but ooh, it looks cute. It does look like little bananas on the side here. So, all right, there is uh, that's like our finished. Oh, no, no, we're not finished. We gotta actually sew, sew around the edge. So, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just sew just on the inside of all these edges. So, that'll take a little bit of time. There's a lot of a lot of pieces here, but I think it's adorable. There's that little monkey with his bananas and these weird like side bananas, but you know, it still looks like that pretty floral pattern. Um, these light pieces that we picked definitely pop out the most. So I think that was a good choice. But the little bits of yellow in there are fun too. I like it. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you guys around and uh, you can see what it looks like next to a human and we'll call it an evening. All right, hello everyone. Yes, it's a very antique looking black. Agreed, Noeline. This is like one of those classic, what is it called? Uh, Boston something appliques, uh, picture book Boston appliques, something like that. Someone, uh, someone who knows, uh, say it out here. I know there's there's a style um, for. Maybe I'm wrong to these these pretty ones. Uh, Sandra, I'm just going to use my my just muslin colored thread. So it'll it'll be very subtle. It'll basically disappear into into the black. I'm not going to I'm not going to use any strong color. I mean, it would be Oh, Baltimore. <laughs> there we go. Baltimore um applique a little bit. Um those are I think more they're needle turn and I'm sure there's a backstory to that that I don't know a history to to it, but See, I did that thing again, though. I knew it was a B. <laughs> Baltimore. But yeah, I could use a different color, maybe. Like, I could find maybe a yellow or something, because then from far away, they would all be framed a little bit. Um, so, I don't know. Well, I have a, I have a weekend to uh, figure that out, though. Ooh, even pink. Even outlining in pink. I don't have any of those thread colors, though, I don't think. But, but maybe... Maybe like a cute little pink around all the bits would be awfully cute. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah, definitely subtle, but I think it's going to be, um, I think it's pretty. So awesome, guys. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, so you can check out the replay there. And I have all the products uh, listed below. I should have the steam a seam there, as well as my iron, and also that link to those uh, Schmetz needles. Um, they're just up there for like five more hours or so. So if you want to get snag those on that mass drop deal, uh, I have a link to that as well. So thank you so much, everyone. And I will see you here on Monday. Have a great weekend. Good night.